Hi, it's David Gom in the Stained Glass Studio. As promised, this is the third version of, or let's see, it's the third section of the STARS instruction. Now these are more in depth and uh, stick with me here. I'm going to try and show you advanced techniques and also tell you a little bit about beginner techniques. So there's a way for you to be able to do most of them. Um, and uh, I, I hope this is fun for you. I hope you find some inspiration to do some of your own. The next uh, piece on the PDF is the Jewish Six Point Star. Here's what it looks like when you're done. And there are four, four pages for, for the print. So you cut them out, uh, tape them together, cut your pieces out. The same thing's true with this one. This is a military uh, service emblem. And it's a pretty large piece. You see, and you can place it on a plate. Uh, uh, you know, there's there are... Um, hanging hangers for plates and you can just place it like that on the wall to hang or you see because whoever if, you know if you're honoring the Navy you would place it like this or you can uh, uh, just put it in a uh, on a regular easel and so each one of these now these are all sandblasted and uh, we're going to show how to sandblast in just a minute, but we're not going to do these because these are just single, single blast uh, pages. So you'd only so the other one's more complex, and so we're going to we're going to show that. But anyhow, that's the military star. The next one is the sandblasted project. Now you'll see this. Here's the sandblasted project. It's a star with some rays coming out of it. Now this glass was very thick and we cut it on a tile saw because it gave us this nice uh, uh, rough chipped edge. We thought that looked pretty cool. And it, the thing that's nice about it is it stands up nicely. And then we just put a little label on it. This was for some groups, uh, girls camp. So that was their, their uh, uh, trophy. So we're going to show how to do that one right now and here's the piece of glass that that is the same size as the one on our uh, on our sheet. So I guess the first thing we can do is cut that piece out. And this is our pattern. Now on the sandblasting, I'm going to use a piece of clear contact paper. Okay, now on clear contact paper, you know, you get the plastic on one side and you've got the peel off paper on the other. So now you got to bend it over a little bit, kind of like uncooperative copper foil. I like to just plop it down onto the contact paper. Then I then I just can flip it over. Okay, now it's covered on the front and the back. 
Now the reason we want it covered on both sides is that if there's any overspray from the sand, we don't want to ruin our, our glass surface. Now let's see, this is the seedy side, so I want to cut my glass on the smooth side. So what I'm going to do now, put some spray adhesive on my paper and I just let it sit for a bit. And that's about as fun as watching paint dry. Okay, so now I'm going to wipe a little of that off. Now I'm going to put this down. So I've now glued the paper pattern onto the contact paper, which is over. Uh, the glass. Now this is what we do whenever we do uh, sandblasted pieces. Now we just did a face the other day and uh, we had to sandblast where the paint was going to stick. This is exactly what we did. So the next thing I need is a sharp exacto knife. Now this is a sharp one but it's not brand new fresh. We find that if you leave an X-Acto blade overnight, it won't cut as good. And so if it's been left overnight or longer, you need a new blade. Maybe that's not true with all blades. But I find these exacto blades are nice and sharp, just perfect. I always keep it in this oiled paper. Now, while I've been uh, waiting, while I've been putting this blade in, this paper has probably dried so that it won't slide around on us. Now, here's the part. This is going to be a two-stage blast. When you do a one-stage blast, you just cut everything out and pull it all off. But on a two-stage blast, you want to cut all your lines, every single one. So, on a star, you can you don't have to just, you can go all the way across Instead of taking little short cuts. Now, because I can see that there's one, two, three, four, five cuts, I know that all of them have been cut. Now, with the, um, the streaming pieces that come off of the star, I cut all the way almost to the edge. And then I cut around slightly. So that. So those pieces will come loose. Now what we want is to have a really deep star and fairly light rays. OK, 
it feels like that one's already cut. Okay, so this one's ready to blast. Now, the reason we cut all of the pieces is that when we blast the first blast, all of our lines will be gone. So when you're doing like a 15 stage blast, that can get really confusing. Okay, now I like to take the end of my X-Acto knife and burnish the edges down really well so that they don't flip up when I'm blasting. The other thing I like to do is take my blade and scrape along the glass to make sure that there isn't any stickiness on there. And there isn't, so that means that when I blast, the sand will be hitting all of the uh, surface area and that'll be good. So now I take both of these with me and we're going to go over to the blasting cabinet. Okay, so this is the sandblast cabinet and I've got it open here so that I can show you the gun. Now on this particular gun um, you see there's a hose where uh, the, the compressed air comes goes in and there's also this hose which is a venturi. And what happens is as the air passes over that hose it draws uh, sand up through and blasts it into what our subject. And um, uh, there's an article about how to set up this type of cabinet. There's also on the website, there's also um, this type of pressure pot that can be used. I'm not using this one right now, but I go into depth on how to set one of those up as well. Now we need to Put our little piece into the blast cabinet, lock it in place. I pick up my gun, which is down in the sand. That is not sand, by the way, that's uh, aluminum oxide. I feel, feel like it's uh, sharper and it also is less dangerous if you breathe the dust. Okay, and so then, about I hold the gun about six inches away from the star, and I just blast. And you can see already that it's uh, that it's uh, blasted away quite a bit of it. But we want to have a nice heavy blast on our star. I've got the trigger pulled all the way down, and what I usually do with this type of piece is I just keep blasting until my compressor kicks on. And there it is. Okay, so you can see that it's... Is that okay? Is it too loud? Okay, you can see that it's um, blasted, and I test it. I, I go ahead and I push with my X-Acto knife, and I can see that it's got a pretty nice deep blast. So now I'm ready to pull out the, the little rays. So one...
Okay, you can see that if I hadn't cut those before, I would have had a hard time being able to see where to cut them this, this time. And you can see that the, the star is actually blasted in farther down, and so this will give us a nice relief. So now I can put it back in. Now I've gone back and forth several, a couple of times and I really don't need any more depth than that. Okay, so we can go in the other room where it's not as noisy. Okay, so now we can pull this contact paper right off. and it reveals our completed star and it's got I, it's got texture here I can feel these but I can also feel every part of the blasted in star so that's what's nice about that kind of a piece this is good for uh, for the, like the military uh, panel it's also good for a, a trophy uh, but it's really, really good for if you're going to apply paint because you've got tooth here to the glass. You can smear the paint on. We will paint it on and it'll be overlapping the edges and then we let it dry and then we scrape it right off because it doesn't stick to the place that doesn't have tooth. And that's how we do that. Okay, so that's the... Uh, the part on sandblasting, but now we want to show something about fusing glass. Because the next page shows the different sizes that we use for the different sizes of stars. And see, this is the mini star, and see how small that is? That's very, very, it's only, uh, I think, a three-quarter inch height. Yeah, see that's three quarter. And what I want to do, I'm, of course I can't really fuse for you, but what I want to do is show you how I cut uh, for some stars. So I'm going to take the orange glass that I have left over and I'm going to cut it right here. I'm going to set my strip cutter to three quarter. That's almost as small as you can get it. Then I dip it in oil. Now, I was not scoring the glass just now. I was just distributing some oil. Now I'm ready to score. Run my... Okay. Now, I'm going to use running pliers on this piece and it didn't sound like it really scored all that great so I don't know how it's going to come out. Okay, so it came out really well. Running pliers have a curved jaw top and bottom so it's just like this action except with a lot more leverage. Alright, so now here it is and I want to make those little uh, star points. Now you remember on the other one I just went back and forth you know all the way across. Now that's what I do here to make these mini stars. You see, I just do it by eyeballing it. Okay, that's enough to show you what I'm doing. And I would go all the way along this strip. Then I take my running pliers and just okay. 
So that gives me enough to show you. Now this, I wanted to show, this is the shelf that we put in our kiln. And I have to have some shelf paper down. Now this has been kiln washed, so nothing would stick. Glass, melted glass would not stick. However, I use kiln paper, shelf liner, and this is the papyrus that Spectrum makes. It looks like any other kind of paper, but what is amazing is the life of it. You get two or three good um, fuses on this kind of paper. It doesn't de decompose as quickly. So I take it Draw around it. Cut it out with regular scissors. Now this is going to fit really well uh, on my kiln shelf. I keep all the extra pieces because these pieces are uh, just as good as the regular paper, so I can just put them together. Now I put it down. Now it's ready. Now it usually takes me about an hour, hour and a half to lay out the mini stars when I do a whole bunch of them. And here's what I do. So you lay them out in a star design and then you put your glass tack glue on it and then you do your next and next and next and you, until the entire shelf is filled up. Then once that's done then I Take the whole platter, put it over in the kiln. I've got some stilts to keep it up about that high. Uh, right now it's a little bit warm because we're using it as a heating source here in the shop. But that's how that's done. So that's, if you have a kiln, and by the way, there are different sizes of kilns. There's these little ones that you pull the lid, the lid off and, and they, they run on 110 and they're great. And there's even the little tiny microwavable ones that are, that are fun. So you could try some of these type of stars in, in those type of, of kilns as well. All right, well, we're heading towards the end. I told you that there was a lot to cover on, on uh, this PDF. This is for those few of you who happen to have a glass saw or if it's on your wish list this is the star pattern here's the star you take each of the star pieces you cut them out you can only do this one with a saw I guess you could grind but that would take you just forever and then when you're done these just stand up they're kind of fun make great decorations okay in addition to that we've also included 
both a five point and a seven point star on the PDF. This and, and some of the things that go along with the symbolism, which we found to be quite fascinating. You know, Jeannie wrote a whole book on the stained glass mandalas. So here's one. This shows the five-pointed star. When it's in this position, it is considered to be, this is one of the interpretations, man praying to God. When it's this way, back before uh, uh, witchcraft uh, embraced it, this upside down one now, that one in the old days was God answering man. And then the seven-point star has uh, the Sun, Venus, Mercury, Moon, Saturn, Jupiter, and Mars, and also their associated uh, metals. So it's just kind of fun. Venus, copper, represents woman. Mars, iron, represents man. I just thought that would be interesting for you to see. Here is a freedom star. You can print this out as a 12-inch block, and uh, that works out pretty well. And then I wanted to show you the this fused project that we did. Uh, it's a very very famous comic book character has a has a shield that looks like this. We made this before the movie came out, by the way. And uh, so this is the size of the in internal uh, uh, star. So you have to cut this star out on a ring saw. And these are pieces that go that fill in. Here's what it looked like before it went in the kiln. And here are two of them. This one we left flat just and pulled it out on a shadow box. This one we put on a in a platter and sunk it down and allowed it to we, we left some moisture in the platter mold so that it would look like it had been damaged in battle. So this is before the battle and this is after the battle. And yeah, that was kind of fun. So stars are fun. Uh, there's lots and lots of things you can do with them. I thought I'd point out that, uh, you know, sometimes all you need to uh, to really get going in stained glass and to have another good idea. Uh, here, up here, this is uh, one of our stars. And this is, this panel is featured in our stained glass quilt video. So, you see, We, we don't even need to limit ourselves to just one video to talk about stars. There's just so many different ways that you can uh, uh, find to express yourself. These make great gifts. People love them. And uh, I hope this has been an informative and inst great instructional video. You know, I didn't mention that we have uh, some of these pins that the genie made and they're fused and then they have a pin on the back so you can put them on your jacket and um, all right that's that's it for now I guess <laughs> all right genie what's your favorite kind of star of all of these I I don't know I like all of them for different reasons I would like the uh, fused stars hanging in the window um, but I'm I kind of like the Moravian star because of all the different facets to it. Yeah, yeah. This one's particularly attractive because it's got all the colors. Mm -hmm. You did a really good job on that. I, I really like that. Um, these little stars make good things to hang from your... Christmas tree? Oh, well, I was thinking of the rearview mirror. Uh, yeah? Now, and, or a necklace? And Jeannie uh, made about... Well, actually, Jeannie let me make about 180 of them. Thank you very much. Recently. <laughs> and uh, they just hung a ribbon through them so they could give them to ladies in her church group. No, that, that was kind of fun. I think you they came up with it. some sort of a saying about stars being heavenly yes. or I don't know. Something Anyhow, meaningful. That was pretty neat. <laughs> All right, well, uh, 
we want to encourage you to look at our stained glass project series. Of course, the star video that you're watching right now is one of the many that we have. You can find information about these um, on our website, gsg-art.com. GSG stands for Gone Stained Glass, or it might be Great Stained Glass, I'm not sure which. <laughs> Anyhow, there, there's a lot of instruction on, on our website there, okay. how to do stuff. And we also have uh, Stained Glass Mandalas for Meditation. And they're just some essays and patterns about um, stained glass, how I came up with some of the patterns that I've made, and just some, uh, some simple, some a little more advanced, but just to, to kind of let you know what's behind making the pattern and the thought that goes behind it, the meaning that is behind some of the patterns. Well, it's really fun. Jeannie spends a lot of time designing. Uh, it's just, it's I, fun. I'm pretty impressed uh, with some of the designs you come up with, too. Well, thanks. I think oh. that every pattern has a meaning. Whether or not the client um, tells me about a meaning, it seems like when I'm building it and designing it, meanings come forth. So it's kind of fun. Uh, recently, we installed some, uh, <coughs> some transoms that had roses in them on Valentine's Day. Wasn't that fun? There was a lot of meaning in that, huh? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, she saw them and gasped and then ran over to her husband and gave him a big hug. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was really neat. We got to be a part of that. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty fun. Yeah. yeah, and it was funny too. I guess in the morning he had given her roses and something before she went to work. And he said, oh, and I'm going to give you some other roses later on. Mm -hmm. and, and they, they were they red, were... orange, and yellow roses in the transoms. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was fun. All right, so stained glass, it's great. Yeah. Well, thank you. See you next time. Okay, I hope that's been fun for you. I hope that you will also be inspired to do some more stained glass work, especially do some stars. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you on our next video.